We are back with another interview of important people of Dunwoody. I am Mark Galvin, the Director of Marketing for Discover Dunwoody, and we enjoy bringing people to you to help you learn something new, find out what's going on in Dunwoody, maybe just meet somebody who can help you get things done. Today, I am awfully excited to share with you that we're on location. This is not something that we do that often, and we are at Functionize with Lauren Sock, owner, operator, founder of Functionize. Lauren, welcome. Yeah, thank you. And we have your colleague. He is His name is Jake Reynolds, but you can call him Jacques. <laughs> is it no we decided that's not yeah, actually that's, your yeah, real yeah. name but yeah. that was yeah. i wasn't supposed to say that was i no but that's okay okay good well, well it's good to have you here i'm happy to be here thanks for having us Mark. so we're here because in our first interview with lauren she said something about dry needling and we said hey we should get that on video wait a minute did i say that up? Did I say that? For things like dry needling, which is a very popular modality that people are doing now. Ow. <laughs> Ow, <Does> right. It <laughs> no, it actually doesn't hurt. <laughs> it is very thin. Wait, 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 come on. You're sticking <laughs> needles in me. Why wouldn't that hurt? We are definitely here to see that. Tell me a little bit about dry needling and what that therapy solves. Sure. Um, so dry needling is kind of a, a treatment approach that we can do as part of a general physical therapy, you know, um, uh, protocol, if you will. Um, and so we, we take extra education. It's not part of our general curriculum in physical therapy school. So we go and we get certified as dry needling specialists. Um, and so what it is, is we take needles. So like very thin needles, we call monofilament needles, kind of like if people have done acupuncture, they're very similar to that. Okay. But we're looking at trigger points, which are tight knots in the muscle. So a lot of people get neck tightness and you feel those knots and you just want them massaged out. That is what we call a trigger point. Okay. But you can get trigger points anywhere in your body. It can be calf tightness, it can be low back, shoulders, any, anywhere. And we insert the needle into the trigger point with the goal of releasing the tightness. All right, so, so let me ask you a question. So you got a trigger point, there's tightness, the dry needle goes to that trigger point. Why does it relieve tightness? What I'll, happens? I'll let Jake talk about that. <laughs> so there's, there's a handful of like prevailing theories as to why that happens. And we could get super technical about that. And the two most dominant theories are that the introduction of what's called a nociceptive stimuli, so something that inflicts pain, right? So a needle, um, they believe that the introduction of that causes a depolarization of our sodium potassium and ion channels that allows for better flow of inflammatory chemicals in and out of cells to clear out the inflammation from the, the target tissue. Oh. There is another theory um, that simply the introduction of a metal into the, the tissue causes that same effect. It's one of those things that it's a difficult thing to study. There's a lot of things in healthcare that we kind of generally don't understand. Like we don't understand why anesthesia knocks people out. We just know that it does. Yeah. But what we know and what we can observe is through what's called microdialysis, is testing the chemical environment of a tissue before and after the insertion of a dry needle or a monofilament needle, you'll get an immediate reduction in the inflammatory response in wow. the tissue. So you, get, you feel better immediately and the muscle actually functions better immediately. Unbelievable. And so this was, you, you've talked about uh, acupuncture, some of the things. Is there a history of, of dry needling? And is it, uh, you know, where does that, where did it start? I, I think Do we know? I, 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 know, I believe I the, the origins are like Scandinavian in, okay. in nature. Yeah. It's been going on for a very long time. Right. That's why your name is Jacques. That's right. That's yeah. why I have a very deep, rich history of Scandinavian medicine. Um, no, so dry needling was actually brought to the United States um, a, a long time ago, and the trigger point theory actually comes from JFK's cardiologist and his physical therapist. So that's a little cool wow. little tid, tidbit of uh, history. But um, Georgia was actually the first state in the United States to put dry needling into the Physical Therapy Practice Act. And that took place, I think, in the early 2000s. So it's only been around yeah. in the United States for about 20 years or so. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, 
Good. But it's, I mean, it probably has its, its roots and origins in sort of Eastern medicine using the acupuncture theory, but intramuscularly, so actually oh deeper God. than acupuncture. And, and it, you know, it's called dry needling because you're not injecting anything. It's not a hollow needle where you're injecting something that would be called wet, a wet needle, okay. where it's hollow and you're injecting. This does not have anything but the needle itself. Got that it. Goes in. Okay. Well, we are, stick around, we're going to dry needle me. And I just want you to know, this isn't something that we're like, okay, we're just going to pick a body part and mark and, and stick needles in. You and I have done some work on my knee, speaking of wanting to be healthy in 20 years. Uh, my right knee has bothered me in the past, and uh, Lauren has been trying to help me solve some of those things that are happening, and, and part of that was the dry needling. So this is great. We're going to help my knee, and you guys get to experience this. All right. So we're going to find some tight spots in Mark's quadriceps or his thigh. Um, a lot of people tend to have tightness in the outside where your IT band is, um, sometimes on the inside of, of your thigh as well. So I'm gonna just kind of use my hands first to feel. Um, some people do ultrasound guided dry, dry needling where they actually ultrasound the area and find those tight spots. We're not doing that today. We are just using our hands to feel where the tightness is. Well, there's tightness right there. I yeah, that. it sure is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so of course we're going to use gloves. All right, so I'm going to use these needles. So these are really tiny needles. They're 0.3 um, millimeters. Is that right? Millimeters? Point Gauge. Three? Gauge, uh, yeah. yeah. Whatever the measure um, is. So I have a tube that the needle goes in. I have my needles. Um, so we can see they are very, very um, thin and tiny. We call them monofilament needles. So that's why we don't have bleeding because of how small these needles are. All right, now what we're gonna do, I'm feeling where his tightness is, and I'm going to put the needle in. Oh, there was a, there was a twitch. Yep. Jake, you wanna tell them what the twitch is all about? So when you dry needle, you will often get what is called a twitch response. And as you recall, that's the thing that we were talking about, is that depolarization in the muscle um, that causes the muscle to actually spasm. Um, I would equate it to almost like a micro cramp. Mark, would you agree with that? What does this sensation feel like to you? Yeah, it's, it's a pinch is what it feels like. I mean, it is, is not, if, if I was, if this had happened without being here, I would definitely scratch it, right? Right. It'd feel like a, you know, what's going on down there? Mm -hmm. It is not, it's not painful. Mm -hmm. It just feels, all right, something's going on there. So oftentimes... Now that one, I didn't feel at all. You didn't feel at all. Yep, and I was just going to say, sometimes you'll feel them. When you feel that twitch and that action potential that happens, you'll feel it. I think it, like I said, it sometimes feels like a cramp. It may have like an electric feeling to it. Right. Um, almost like a, a, like you said, a scratch, a, a, a internal scratch that you can't quite itch without right. a needle. Yep. Um, my analogy, I often so tell she people. So put in four now? There are four in your leg currently. The last yeah. one I didn't feel either. At all. Yeah. No. Um, I often tell people if doing massage to a muscle is the shotgun approach, dry needling is the sniper rifle. So it's, it's a far more precise and more potent tool to alleviate some of those intramuscular knots that you're getting. So. Now, I, since we have done this before, she, you have done it before, and I went, okay, that one is not feeling good and you took it out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so part of this is you you have a conversation with the, sure. the patient yes yeah. and I have said oh oh no no and mm -hmm. you you've pulled it out right. so the patient is in control of what we're doing if they yeah. say they don't like it we stop you don't have to do a ton of needles to see an effect um, you know even just one needle can create an effect usually people need a few more than that so we're going through the tightness on the side and just putting the needles in now I can you know, put a needle in and leave it there. I can do what's called piston the needle, where I kind of go in and out with the needle. Yeah, don't do and, that. Oh, there we go. It, tri it <laughs> oh twitched goodness. again. Um, I felt that one. So that will, you can get different fibers of that. There's other techniques where you can, um, tw like, twist it um, and get the, the needle to do, um, you know, some different things in, in the tissues. Um, all right, so then what I'm going to do is do some electrical stimulation. So, Jake, do you want to tell them what this is all about? Sure. 
So this is an e-stim unit, electrical stim unit, uh, similar to a TENS unit. Many people have heard or have had TENS before. Um, what it's doing is providing a low-grade electrical current via the conduction of a metal needle into the muscle. So this causes further sort of relaxation of the muscle, but it also helps us uh, reestablish good firing patterns and tone within the muscle itself. Yeah, so I'm not doing that. You guys so it's are doing the that. muscles twitching. Um, it might, you might not, it's hard to see, but it's creating a twitch, like a pulsing of the muscle, if you will, um, trying to get the muscle to start working again. So when we have a tight muscle or a trigger point, the muscle shuts down and it actually, the muscle gets weak because it can't work as it should. So we're also trying to kind of jumpstart that muscle and get it working again. And that's what's really helpful with the electrical stim is we'll get um, the muscle, will start jumping. So this all looks generally very scary, you know, turning someone to a pin cushion, four, <laughs> five needles in his leg right now. Once they're in there, you generally don't feel much. The needles are right. so fine, so thin that it just feels like pressure. Um, the pulsing, again, is not typically painful. Um, and if it is, we, we don't want it to be painful. We'll modulate the setting to bring it down to a comfortable kind of just like your, your, your muscle is just twitching. Mark, what, what are amusing, you feeling? Quite frankly, yeah. It's I mean, a little it's like, odd, wow, right? That's, yeah, it's, it's jumping on its own. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like it's a, you know, I, I can't even describe it. It's just yeah. my muscle is, has it's gone off on its own. It has a mind of its own. But it's, now, again, it's not painful usually. And I don't feel the needles now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once they go in, typically you don't really feel them. Um, and if you do feel them, sometimes it's just that it's close to like a blood vessel or a nerve. And so we can just change the position of the needle yep. and, um, and alleviate that very quickly. Yep. So we have them in there. We're going to take them out. Um, a treatment's usually very quick. This is not like acupuncture where you have to lie there for 20 to 30 minutes with a bunch of needles in you. We're also not doing, trying to balance someone's energy with the needles as acupuncture would. We're strictly trying to release a tight area or a tight muscle. Um, and get it working again. Okay, so I'm going to take it out, um, and so they just easily come out. So this feels like she's pulling hair out of my leg. Yep, and so as you can see, there's no blood. There, um, it just um, they went in. They're so tiny. They come out, and he wouldn't even you couldn't even tell where the needles were after that. Um, and so now he's not as tight. What I'm feeling is how tight is that muscle from when I did it initially to now. And a lot of that tension in the muscle has been alleviated just by me putting the needles into this. So you hit, you hit a band before we did this and it was painful. Mm -hmm. And it's, we're, whatever you're just rubbing, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, no, it feels awesome. There's no Literally tightness it in it. There's no pain there. Kind of like if you were to pinch, you know, right after, right before you stretch. You know, mm -hmm. a, 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 you know, a tendon or something. It's what it felt like originally. Now I don't, yep. I don't feel you hitting yeah. it at all. And this is what we were talking about: is the there's an immediate reduction in the inflammatory environment, an immediate improvement in muscle firing function. So it's a very potent and powerful technique. Um, it's generally fairly painless, um, and it is a, a very powerful tool that we can use in, in a variety of ways. So generally after we needle, we wanna go through what we call a little bit of aftercare, which is some exercise to help that muscle that is now functioning better. Um, we generally tell people to hydrate um, and you can do some ibuprofen that day as well if you are sore. So generally you might be a little bit sore, almost like you did a hard workout, um, but it, it's not painful, so. Yeah, and you're not limited in what you can do after it. We don't, you don't have to rest or anything like that. Actually moving and keeping yourself mobile is more important than just sitting and resting. I am so glad I just donated my legs for science. <laughs> yes, because you, you're We are too. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for, for letting us do this and bring this information to other people. Yeah. So It's awesome. All right, so thank you all for being here. We'll be back with you in a moment. Thanks for joining us for this episode on location at Functionize here in Dunwoody. If you want to hear more information or learn more about Functionize, go to FunctionizeHealth.com. That is FunctionizeHealth.com or look in our show notes and we'll be sure to put the, that, uh, that URL there for you. Thanks again for watching. I am Mark Galvin. This show was produced by Discover Dunwoody. Our producer is Madison Holtz. Our sound technician is Emily Inser-Gibson. 
So we gave away our Dunwoody stickers at the 4th of July parade. If you would like one of those 4th of July stickers, all you got to do is you can go to City Hall, you can go to the library, actually you can come here to Functionize and get one, or come to our offices and you can see our address right on our own website. On behalf of the entire Discover Dunwoody team, thanks for watching. Be sure to watch us on all of our social media channels, and that is Discover Dunwoody. So just go at Discover Dunwoody, and you'll find us everywhere and anywhere on all social media. Until next time, enjoy the day, and come Discover Dunwoody.